what's up, Crypto Keith here. So we see Roger Ver just released a video on his YouTube channel saying how he, he just released his plans for a free society. So to sum it up, we are purchasing sovereign land from a government to create the world's first libertarian country. So as I'm sure uh, a lot of people in this room are aware that lots of people have made uh, a lot of money thanks to cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. And a big giant chunk of those people are hardcore libertarian voluntarists, you know, free market advocates. So what's the next step? Here it is. All right. This society is supposedly going to be based off volunteerianism and voluntary interaction. I'm Roger Veer. I'm the first uh, investor in the entire Bitcoin ecosystem for Bitcoin startups and that sort of thing. I'm also a voluntarist. For people that don't know what a voluntarist is, it's basically somebody who thinks that all human interactions should be on a voluntary basis or not at all. And the difference between a voluntary interaction and a coerced interaction is the difference between working for a living or being a slave. It's the difference between making love or being raped. And so all throughout society and all your interactions with people in your day-to-day -day life, everybody deals with everybody on a voluntary basis, with a few exceptions, murderers, rapists, thieves, and governments. <laughs> so if we all know that murderers, rapists, and thieves are bad people for dealing with each other on a coercive, non-voluntary means, what does that make you think about governments? He also explains how there have been similar projects that have tried to do similar things before this, but have failed. So anyhow, in history, there's been other people that have tried to do things. So there was the Republic of Minerva. I probably didn't pronounce that very well. Uh, but it was basically a sand atoll out in the middle of the Pacific. And a very, very wealthy a group of people, I think it was in the late 70s, went out there and started dredging up more sand. And they tried to build their own island out in the middle of uh, the Pacific. And they wanted to start their own, you know, libertarian-ish, uh, you know, geographic piece of the world there. And what happened, as soon as they had spent a whole bunch of money dredging up this uh, sand atoll and turning it into an island, uh, the neighboring, you know, local coercive, you know, violent thug showed up from the government of uh, Tonga, I believe, and said, oh, thank you for dredging up this land for us. It's ours now. And they used a bunch of guns and kicked them out of there. Sealand is another very, very interesting story. It uh, was a gun turret that was abandoned off the coast of the UK after World War II. And some people have set up a, a data center out there and they, they kind of say that it's their own thing. Uh, anyhow, seasteading is also very interesting. Uh, and Liberland is another project uh, between Croatia and Serbia where both countries claim this land doesn't belong to us. The reason they're claiming that land doesn't belong to either of those countries is because if they lay claim to that land, they lose claim to an even bigger piece of land that both countries want a lot more. But uh, that's another fantastic project that I'm a big fan of and a supporter of as well. And uh, you know, anything that's peaceful, that's, that's my motto. Anybody should be allowed to do absolutely anything that's peaceful. He thinks the thing that is going to separate him from the rest of everybody and why no one thought of this before is he realized that all you have to do is just ask. So um, throughout the world, you know, if you can raise enough money, why not just ask? Hey, there's a lot of governments out there with a bunch of debt and poverty and natural disasters. Just ask them, hey, if we give you a whole giant pile of money, how about you give us some land? And that's exactly what we've done. And uh, We've been really, really surprised by just how much uh, reception there's been from these governments. So, uh, so actually, we called up some governments already. We've been talking to a number of governments already, and uh, we were stunned by just how interested and enthusiastic they were. They're like, you're going to give us a bunch of money for land we're not particularly using already at the moment? So uh, it was really, really a pleasant surprise just how interested they've been. And of course, uh, small governments are easier to deal with than big, giant governments. And uh, We'll be naming some names in the future, but not quite yet today. And he does have a good point. The timing is right. This is something that I've thought about doing myself, and it's going to happen one way or another, some sort of decentralized community. 
Um, and of course, the timing is right, right? People all across the world are realizing that government doesn't work. Uh, a big influencing book in my own life was Harry Brown's Why Government Doesn't Work. And I, I read that book and it started to open my eyes. I guess government doesn't work. And uh, the whole world is becoming decentralized right before our eyes. I and mean, we, we're all here at this conference, we know that. Um, but the rest of the world is starting to realize that as well. And governments are, you know, they're not only going in the opposite direction, they've, you know, been in the opposite direction since day one. They're a coercive institution that deal with other individuals by violence or threats of violence. And for any sane person, you should realize that dealing with other adults through violence or threats of violence, that's not the right way to live your life. So uh, governments uh, and all forms of violence, uh, we're going to do away with those as much as we possibly can. So uh, He explains how the law and constitution will come into play and how he will work with the current system and make sure that they know ahead of time what's going to happen and they have an agreement. And basically we need to set the right example for the rest of the world, right? There's not going to be any government of any kind. Uh, all the basic rules will be agreed upon up front. So we're going to buy this land and we're going to set the rules of the game plan there. And uh, if anybody's read uh, David Friedman's The Machinery of Free Freedom, there's a bunch of uh, fantastic uh, examples of how this could potentially work, but at the end of the day, the free market's going to be what figures it out. So uh, the law and the Constitution are going to be part of the actual land deed for this. So think of it kind of like a private home, home ownership uh, association. You lay out the ground rules from day one, and, and that's the playing rules. And uh, it's going to be, again, based on the ideas of uh, voluntarism and the non-aggression principle. Um, competing private protection agencies will deal with uh, protection, right? Think about it. If a police car pulls up behind you while you're driving, do you feel more or less safe? <laughs> if you're driving down the road and a private security guard that uh, patrols the local shopping mall pulls up behind you, do you feel more or less safe? Probably about the same. Um, but that should tell you which one of those agencies is doing a better job of making you feel safe and secure in your belongings. Um, and uh, we'll negotiate some additional protection from uh, external threats from the country that sells us the land originally. He does state that they are never going to join the UN, and I would never either. The United Nations, I'm sure everybody here is uh, probably not that big of a fan of the United Nations. We're not going to join! So. so, of course, no plans to join, right? It would require a central authority. This land isn't going to have a central authority. We're all about decentralization. We're going to buy some land there's not going to be a central authority. And not dealing with the UN avoids a lot of other issues. So I'm sure you're all wondering about passports. That would require a central authority. It would require UN membership, right? Just use your existing passport. Kids can automatically get the you know, citizenship from their parents. He throws in Bitcoin Cash here and there. Meanwhile, it has nothing to do with this decentralized community. And I think he knows that probably as exciting or maybe even more exciting than Bitcoin Cash at the moment. To make it clear, the lawyers have told me very, very carefully that this is not an ICO. So that's our big announcement. Sorry we didn't cover Bitcoin Cash, but before the invention of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, this sort of thing wouldn't have even been possible. So uh, Bitcoin enabled this. This is the next step uh, after Bitcoin. What's next? Uh, we're exploring ways for the public and the interested parties to participate again. This is not an ICO. So is this Roger Ver trying to get attention, realizing that the hype has died down, Bitcoin Cash needs another weapon against Bitcoin, or is this an honest, sincere attempt that he's done lots of uh, looking into and research into? We'll show you some questions and answers, and then you, can make the judgment for yourself and let us know in the comments down below whether you think he's sincere and whether you think that he can actually do this within the next six months to a year. And Lynn Ulbricht is right here in front, so Lynn gets to go first. Uh, Ross Ulbricht's mother, for those of you that don't know. So.
Yep, so uh, the question for those that couldn't hear, what about uh, people being extradited from this land? So uh, we were actually just talking about that earlier this morning and uh, we're not sure to be honest. So I, I suppose if some other country wants to extradite somebody, they'll have to contract with one of the protection agencies in the land or to get them or come and get them themselves or? I was thinking we'll more see. of extraditing from the United States, somehow get yeah. someone from the United States. So the, the question is how would we extradite someone from the U.S.? Uh, well, it's just a little fancy. Yeah, I, I don't think the, I think the U.S. is the big bully and uh, I think they do whatever they want and as much as I would love to help on that front, I, I, I'm not sure how we can help on that front at the moment. So, and this guy looks very, very eager with his hand up in the back. Uh, so the question is, will the, the citizens or the, not even citizens, the people living there uh, be armed enough to defend themselves from the previous sovereign government that owned the land? Uh, hopefully, we'll see. Um, there's a whole lot of details that need to be worked out. Uh, but at the same time, even if we don't get everything absolutely perfect from day one, it's still probably going to be a heck of a lot better than any other country in the entire world at this point. Uh, so, I, I think this guy in the back was even more good, but you're next, so. And so the question is, can we grow and research cannabis uh, on this land? Uh, Probably not for export. Uh, a lot of it will depend on what sort of negotiations we're able to finalize with the country that we purchased the land from. Of course, any sane person that's heard of the non-aggression principle would have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, but you know, the devil is always in the details. And again, a lot of it will depend on exactly what sort of agreement we can get from the existing country with the land that we purchase. And I promise you were next. Yeah, thank you. So what size land are we talking about and what size society in numbers, just so I can grasp the so the question is what size land, what size society, how many people, you right. know, how big of a place. Um, the bigger the better, right, right uh, is the answer. So a lot of that will depend on uh, once the lawyers figure out exactly how we can allow the public to participate. A hundred million dollars is just the start, right? We would love to have half a billion dollars. I don't think it's out of the question. Maybe even a billion dollars can be raised. I and mean, there's a lot of cryptocurrency millionaires out there that uh, should, would and should love this project. So uh, the more money we raise, the bigger uh, a piece of land we can buy. And maybe we'll even do a couple of different pieces of, of land in different parts of the world and have a couple of competing areas as well. So the more places like this we can set up around the world, the better. And uh, the more money we raise, the more, the more we can do. So no limit on geographical location? Well, if, if the United States would sell us 100% of their land mass, then maybe we would do that. <laughs> but. Yeah, we definitely have a short list. We've actually already been talking to a number of countries. Unfortunately, I can't tell you the names of them right now, so I'm gonna have to leave you in suspense on that front. You can just say what are the names, not that you have a short list. Yeah, uh, those, those names will be coming in the future, but uh, I can't tell you at the moment, I'm sorry. So, oh, nice to see you again. So his question is, what are we gonna do about it once we build this into you know, the world's most prosperous you know, geographical area in the world and the government that we bought the land or some other government nearby decides, hey, you built a lot of nice stuff, we wanna take that. Um, so David Friedman refers to that problem in his book, uh, The Machinery of Freedom, Freedom as the hard problem. Uh, I think the hard problem has been solved. Um, I don't necessarily feel incredibly comfortable talking about that solution in public at the moment, but if you Google that, there's information about that and that ties back into one of the other questions though as well. Um, So uh, we're, we're working out all the details again, and once again, this is not an ICO. Um, <laughs> but the idea at some point is to basically auction off the land. Uh, and then anybody that buys land can do whatever they want with it within the, the title restriction of the land. And again, the question was, how, how do you get to come there and be, and be there? So uh, you know, the free market is, I guess, the short answer. So, so the question is, will there be taxes? Uh, of course not. No, this, this society is based on the non-aggression principle. <laughs> And what about the roads? Um, well, here's a pretty fancy piece of technology in my pocket, right? Governments didn't build this. This is a heck of a, it allows me to, to, to contact anyone anywhere on the planet for, you know, I don't know, a couple pennies a day, depending on what my bill is, less than maybe a dollar a day. I can contact anyone on the planet and communicate with them. That's a heck of a lot harder and more complicated to build than a flat spot on the ground. 
But granted, flat spots on the ground are important. <laughs> but uh, I think a nice way of looking at it uh, will be just like, you know, you have a, a big skyscraper building and you have an elevator shaft and all the tenants within the building contribute to, to maintain the elevator. It'll be, it'll be the same way. All the property owners nearby, they want roads, they'll chip in voluntarily and uh, the free market will figure it out on, on the details. So no, there will be no, there'll be no taxation of any kind. There will be no central authority of any kind to impose that taxation. We're gonna find out what a free society actually looks like and works like. And uh, even if you're not a libertarian, even if you're not a voluntarist, even if you're you know, a hardcore status and you love government controlling everything, you should love and support our project. And don't forget to hit the bell and subscribe. Get on the Crypto Living Notification Squad. And we'll catch you next time. Peace.